So I'm over to the bead roller now and the dice that I have set up here is two narrow flat dice because the flame is going to be wider the first one I'm bending and then I'm using the flame dice that is a little bigger and I'm going to use that as a guide. I can't use the red guide for this purpose. And the top one can just be any radius you want there, it can, it can be there, okay? So what I'm going to do here now, I'm start there and then I'm bending it just a little bit, a few degrees the first time. And check the point that goes to the flame die. Okay, I think I can go one more time, but you see this start getting wavy because I stretched it. Now when I'm bending it back, it should be shorter again. So I need to go and shrink it, but I think I can bend it a few more degrees. So best probably to hold my hand there so I can hold that in level and bend that. But you see now it starts looking really, really ugly. Okay. You're probably thinking that this, this can never be anything again. Look how bad that looks like. But remember, we stretch this out and now when I'm bending it back, it's too long. So now I need to go and shrink this and remember to shrink little all the way now. Don't just do where the puckle is because it's, it's not going to fix the problem. It's little all the way. Many people do that um, thing that they shrinking on the puckles, but it will not solve the problem. So let's go over to the deep shrinker and I'm going to start from one end and shrink that. So I'm going to start from one end and shrink it a little bit. And when I do that, those waves go away. Here where it's a little bigger wave, I need to bite little by little. I can always go back and, and but it, it's important to be consistent with the pressure now. Because if I'm shrinking different, this radius is going to be different too. And I can also see in the light here, if I got a little, little bubble or, or too much bubble, then I can go in with a lighter pressure a little further in. So here I have something going on there. So I probably instead of continue from this side, I probably start from this end and meet that and hopefully that will be very little when I get there. You see it's still a little too much there. So I'm going to get in there, to start biting in. See there, there you go. Then I can go a little more on the side too. And when I do that, so when I do something like that, I'm looking at the whole thing so it looks right. So I go lighter pressure a little further in now to make that surface more flat.
like that. So we have a little, little twist on this and little distortion. What I can do if I want, I can probably go in and roll it a little more with the rubber band in this area to just curve it a little more. I can do that after. So if I roll it a little more with the rubber band here, I think that will solve the problem. So let's go over and do that. So I'm going to roll it pretty much on the red line or maybe a little further to the left from my view. Like that. You see now that straighted up that panel. So I think I should do this end there too because I think it, the whole thing looks a little better. If this wheel can't do the job, I can always go to round a wheel in the English wheel. So I think that is much closer what we're looking for. So let's go back to the bead roller again and then roll this edge in under. If I want, I can take the flattest wheel in the English wheel and I can actually do that to show you one more thing here. So I'm using the shim on the English wheel and I'm just going to roll this with a light pressure Then I have less to grind off in the end because I got some marks from, from the, the, the shrinker marks. So now this is more, more flat so I don't need to grind and hammer doll it at so much. I prefer to use the equipment as much as I can. So now I'm going to go to the bead roller again and I'm going to bend that flange in, this edge in 90 degrees. So I changed the dies here now. It's the same dies but a little different setup. So before I had too narrow on the outside here because the flange was bigger. Now the flange is narrow so I prefer to have a narrow one on the one side and then the flame die on the middle as a guide and a narrow flat one as a spacer on the bottom, or on the inside there. So what I'm going to do now here, turn this down, and then I'm going to roll this. Just keep track on that point there, keep your eyes on that point and it, everything is fine. Immediately when you take your hand, uh, eyes off from that point, it's going to go somewhere else. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to bend it a little more. When you get more comfortable with the bead roller, you can go a little faster if you want. So I go one more time. So there we have a fender flare so far. If you want to keep this, is, if this is the shape you want, you can bend this in a little more by hammer and a dolly. On, hold it on a sandbag and hammer this in a little more. Or if you want this to be more straight, 
you can, we can stretch this and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks like when, when we are more uh, to the shape I looked for. But it depends on what shape you're going to make, okay? I'm over at the stretcher here and I'm starting in one end and light, 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 little all the way. I can always do a little more if I need to. So I saw that I need a little more, so I, I go back as well. But as I said, this is, is depends on what shape you're looking for. You see that the whole thing is more straight now? And you can, you can um, move this edge here to that shape you want and it will follow most of it. Of course, if you're going to have another shape, you should do that on the first part when we roll and stretch this part out. You should get that shape first and then go to the next step and then the next step. Uh, to change the whole curve here now, I can't do that with this flange. This is so hard, so it doesn't move. And if the panel can, if it's a little twisted or so, you can always, you can always bend it by hand too and do some modification. You can always go back with a rubber band in the English wheel and roll it. But this is, this is a flange that I'm looking for. I can show you one little more thing <clears throat> to bend this just a little, little, little bit more so it doesn't show the flange. So we go over to the sandbag. I'm using the sandbag as a working table. It, it's really good. You can uh, don't get any damage from anything. And then I'm using this type of dolly that I flame cut out probably 25, 30 years ago, and I'm still use, using it. So I like to have support down in the corner. Okay, so now you see that this go more straight in. So this was the, the demonstration in the bead roller and the Lean English wheel and the shrink and stretcher for today. And if you need more information or want more information, you can go to www.lassimetalshaping.com. Thank you for watching.